we are still in the title race, but truthfully, like I said before, it's going to come down to the last minute. We'll take on two of our tougher opponents left that we have to face a second game with them still, and we start that with Derby tonight, or today, whenever you're watching. I'm not time specific. I'm just recording at night. This is Gamer. My name is Donkey. Welcome back to the Journeyman. Let's go! <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back. So the last game we were here for was Southampton and Wolves. So, so the second game against Southampton, we lost 2-1. We went 1-0 up through a Juan Hernandez goal. But truth be told, Southampton was a far better team all game. Uh, we then faced Rotherham where we won 3-1 sorry, away from home. Connor Christie, Stefan Negru and James Scott gives a 3-0 lead before Harrison Smith pulled one back. An absolutely horrific tackle from Juan Hernandez. Got him sent off and got a few games suspension because the tackle was that bad. Seriously. And we then lost 1-0 to Middlesbrough. That was a close game, to be honest. We just didn't really turn up. We never looked threatening. We then beat Swansea 1-0 through a Patrick Jones goal. And today we are taking, taking on 5th in the table derby. And then 8th in the table Sunderland. As you can see, we still have quite a few games to go. 13 games left. By the end of the week, we'll know if we've got promotion or even won the title. But this is the league table. Luton are still kind of keeping up while being eight points behind while ourselves and Wolves are joint top goal difference, putting us above them. You've then got conscious, not too far behind. One thing that we have done is actually achieved our goal from the season. We have avoided relegation from the championship. Because I paid out bonuses to about six players for avoiding that. As you can see, our wage budget, we are miles over. But we'll live with it. Our team selection for today is this. Casper is back in goals. This first game he will be back for after his fractured wrist. Negro, Alberg and Kitching return as our back three. With Fernandez and Anderson as our wing backs. Robinson and James in centre mid. Jones, Woodward and Christie making up that front three. Uh, anyone not making the bench? Truffis and George Long. We just work with what we have, don't we? That is the plan. Uh, me just give you a lot of credit. Let's go. I'm kind of thinking that if we pull off the impossible and win this league, or even gain promotion, which, I mean, it's a strong possibility just now, I think we might have to leave in the summer because I don't think we could handle a Premier Division um, <laughs> campaign. I think we'd be sacked so quickly because it's... Considering we're spending like £230,000 a week as it is as our wage budget and Wolves are to top of that on £2 million, that is going to jump up massively in the Premier League. We'll be the weakest side. I mean, right now, the majority of our squad is a League One squad. We are massively overperforming where we are, and the thought of taking this quad to the Premier League is fucking terrifying, truth be told. Unless we got like a lot of investment, and I like had the most thorough pre-season in terms of signings I've ever done, and this one was pretty hard for this season, but doing it for that, it would be so goddamn difficult. Because of the size of the club, and, and the fact, let's be honest, nobody would expect us to stay up, we're going to be paying over the odds in terms of wages for players and everything. It's going to be such a difficult task. And I'm not fully sure it's even one we would survive or come out looking good in, to be honest. So it might be, if we do that, it would be a good time to just try and jump ship to somewhere else. If we'd leave in a high, would look good for what we did. But um, something to consider, I think. And considering the offers we actually got the summer there... When we got promotion from League One to the Championship, I actually don't think we'd be short of a few offers from a few good, decent teams. You know, we got an offer from, well, we got a job interview for a job in France, Belgium, Turkey, and it was all their top divisions. It wasn't like League Two or anything like that. So, you know, it's there. It is there to be done. Right now, Derby have looked the 
better side today and it is a little bit concerning. Christie again is not really having the best of games, nor is Jones. What I've noticed with Christie is Christie is only our second top goal scorer. Patrick Jones is our top. But if you look at Connor Christie, like, he's a very, very, very good player for us. But in, what, 37 appearances, he scored 15 goals. So he's not a 1-2, he's like 1-3 type striker. Is he a striker, is he a winger? I'm not fully sure. They're saying he's a Premier League player, so I guess he'd be one that we could keep. But I think Velge, eh, promotion or not, depending on what you've got to spend, he'd be one I'd maybe look to sell and just build a squad for the championship. Like a good championship squad that you can come back up again the next year. That's what I would probably be looking to do. We'll try to put in Premier League quality where you can, don't get me wrong, but I think you've more realistically got to look for championship level players. Kind of like we did here, but we did it with a lot of League One level players. It could be championship level players. Um, we did come out of the game now by the end of the first half. I have a hair in my glass. This is. Uh, I'm far from pleased. Uh, individuals, Connor Christie, Patrick Jones, Patrick Jones, Lewis Robinson, Fernandez. Uh, you've not been good enough so far. Get it fucking together. Since like we we've last been here, we've been top, second, stayed second, then top again, because ourselves and Wills were kind of almost matching each other on results. I think they've now picked up a draw in there where we haven't, hence why we're on level points and not a point ahead. Um, so it's definitely tight for us at the top. Luton, I mean, they're still kind of keeping up. If there's 13 games left that I haven't done my maths wrong, then there's plenty of time for them to catch up and overtake as well. So it's definitely, a, a, at the moment, a three-way race for the title, but it is looking like it's going to come down to ourselves and Wolves. Now, yes, I could probably say we'll just focus on getting promoted, but I can't do that. It's just not me. So I'm going to focus and try to win this league. We're going to do everything we can to try and win the league. Promotion, yeah, is obviously just phenomenal. And, and it will be an achievement for us if we make it come the end of the season. But, you know, that actual going for the title, for me, it's got to be drilled in. It's got to be what we do. Like We have to have that goal. We have to just go for it regardless. So... Thomas Woodward, the third goal of the season. That's one of the things as well. We're somehow top, but a lot of our players just aren't giving us the same level of performance. As you'd expect, like Woodward is not a championship level player. Uh, James Scott is not a championship level player. So their contributions have also dropped, but they've dropped drastically. Same with Skendraj as well. You know, we've kind of got lucky at how well Jones has played and how Christie's played. Um, that's really got us through this season, I think. 75 minutes on the clock. We are 1 0 up. One th issue we have had for the last run of games, is fitness. So it is something I'm trying to just keep a hold of and just try and keep the guys as fit as possible. Basically doing what we did before, where we were um, resting players in between games. Oh, I don't have Travis on the bench, because he is injured. Fernandez is going to come off for Andrews. That's four changes. <laughs> Going to change your shape. I'm going to risk this. This is so stupid, but I'm doing it anyway. Going to change your shape a little bit. Play with the two up top. Um, 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 um. Kitchen will go out to left back. Alborg will just move over. Ball playing defender cover. You'll still just play as that wing back. So we'll have that flat back four now. They'll do their job there. And hopefully, this keeps us in the game. I mean, it's a big risk, don't get me wrong. Massive risk. To just change our shape, especially when we're only 1-0 up. And it's not like we're changing shape to, to hold, like we're under the cost or anything. It's We're changing shape because I don't have a fit left back. Or left wing back, sorry. Christy with the free kick. <sighs> Hits the netting. But it's not enough to go in. If we just try and hold on. Christy again with the free kick. Off the wall this time. Corner. Don't know who's going to deliver it. Probably Christy. No, it's not Christy. It's Tommy, my target man striker. Please tell me why our target man's not in the box. He's arguably our best header of the bloody ball in terms of stats. Yet he's the one hitting the ball in. Perfect sense, game. Perfect sense. It's probably why I shouldn't have a set piece, coach. But I don't want to do set pieces, okay? 
Kent Nyland, Scott, Andrews, Negru plays the ball forward. Doesn't really get to it was going for. Nyland with a good tackle, but nobody's going to pick up that second ball. Closed them down and gave them a corner. It's just coming up to the last minute of the 90 before I had a time. Six minutes, Jesus. I mean, at least it's not like the Wills game where we were just defending for our lives for like the last 20 minutes. That is the longest nine minutes of any time I've ever had. Like, it didn't feel like nine minutes. It felt like another 90. <sighs> just get the ball clear, Tommy. Right, can we break now? Oh, stop giving away the ball cheaply. Oh, Andrews is all over the place. Good initial tackle for the first one. Catching with that header there. We're not even eating up time here. We're just struggling. Oh, no. No. Oh, Jesus Christ. I've never seen a goalkeeper hitting target for that distance. Right, just clear the ball to hell. Fuck's sake. Right. He throws it forward now. Oh, no. Oh, dear God. Alberg with the clearing header. Alberg just now has been an absolute rock since we've signed him. Very, very happy with that signing. He's probably one of the few signings we've actually like signed and he's just slotted in straight away. Like, there's no being like a bed or in period or anything. I've been so happy for that. I think Nyland actually was maybe kind of similar. I mean, he had one or two games that were poor to begin with. Andrews. Can he find someone in the box? He does it. Scott! James Scott with his seventh of the season, and that seals the three points for us today. You've got to imagine. 30 seconds left of the six minutes injury time, and you can't see Derby getting two goals in that. The man we were talking about earlier on who hasn't really done as well as last season is the one that gets us or guarantees us those three points. So well done, James Scott. And with that, all this pressure is lifted. It doesn't matter now what happens here. Casper collects. That's got to be it. Ref, blow the whistle. You know you want to. And like that, we take the three points against Derby. That's a good three points for us. As I said, they were fourth in the league. And I know they weren't maybe close to catching us, but it is one of the tougher teams that, in theory, if you like, that we've got to get past this year. But again, Hull is one of those teams, for example, that we couldn't beat this year. I think we drew with them both times. We'll still have their game to play, but I guess we'll find out what their result is in just a moment or two. Join us in just a sec for you as we take on Sunderland away from home. And we are back. I've made a mess of, like... um training stuff so there's players who are being rested still so i don't know how that's going to affect our game today um somebody came back who came back who came back who came back hernandez came back from suspension so he's in the squad today <coughs> how did that other game go did wolves win wolves haven't played their game in hand are they playing today wolves are away to rotherham that's an easy three points for wolves that's disappointing Oh, Truffis is back as well, so I'm going to put him on the bench. So who's missing out? Probably never. So it's same team with the exception that Hernandez comes in instead of Woodward in the starting 11, but the rest of the team stays the same. In this game world, Thibaut Courtois is retiring at the end of the season. Still at Real Madrid, apparently. Don't know why I get told about it, but I did. We're the team in black. Sunderland are the team in red and white. Hopefully, we can pick up another three points here and keep ahead of Wolverhampton. Don't know why I called them Wolverhampton. I've never called them Wolverhampton in this um, save so far. Wolves to the 99% of people. Actually, it's Wolverhampton Town. Nobody cares, Inner Duncan. Nobody cares. So they're putting up a defence formation. They're going two up top, though. A defensive mid, two centre mids, two wing backs, and three centre backs. So, and they're the favourites for this game. Not by much, but they are the favourites. 
in the terms of the bookies, but I kind of have us as favourites. I expect us to win. I will be pretty pissed off if we don't. Ooh, unlucky there from Hernandez. Also kind of disappointed how empty the stands are. I'm hoping, though, that crowded corners away fans. Because I haven't seen the away fans if it's not them. Looks like Hernandez picked up a knock or something. He's standing at the side of the park. That's ah, really good play. Oh, that's unlucky for Sunderland. Very lucky for us, actually. Isn't Lowry their wing back? I think it is. Anyway, Kisson's picked up that ball. He's twisted his knee. We'll take him off at half time. Christy plays it short outside the box to Sunday. Hernandez has a shot. That was just a cluster of bodies. No, Lowry's not their wing back. I thought he was. Don't know why. It is Alec Lowry. Huh. Anyway. Martin. I really don't know if I should say it like Martin, but with an M, so Martin. Alberg. Out wide to Anderson. Anderson even, there's no D in there. Juan Hernandez. Jones. Kenny gets filled, puts through. Jones, he's through. Oh, he's at the post himself. It's the type of chance he's been burying this season for us. You can keep telling me that he's hurt. I know he is. He th should be able to play through it, so he'll last till half time. Sunderland with the corner. Please don't, lads. Good header away there by Alberg. Can we just stop them maybe playing the ball around us? That'd be nice. That was an awful attempt, and I'm okay with that. Robinson. Neg oh, Darren Robinson. I don't know if I mentioned this in the last episode either. Darren Robinson is away. He agreed that deal with a a a a a uh, not Atlanta. That's um, Italy. At Atlanta. Atlanta. Why can't I say Atlanta? That American mob. <laughs> he left on that free transfer, but we get 10% if they sell him on. Hernandez cuts it by for James. James, and that is a good finish. It's his eighth goal of the season. And James slots home in the bottom corner just on the stroke of half time. Let's us go in with a little bit of a lead. Might get their heads down. Three minutes added on time here. Assuming that's for the knock on Hernandez, who did get the um assist. Kitching! It's his first goal of the season. He puts his 2-0 up before half time. And this first half has went spectacularly well in the end. But truth be told, I'm not really overly happy with how we've played most of the first half. Um, so that is a bit of an issue. Uh, give him that. Tell you to cam it. And we'll make that change. Woodward will come on for Hernandez. Keeps it. No changes. So it'll be a winger for a winger. Like for like change. They've made a double change. One of their centre mids have came off. Don't know who the other lad is. Sure, we'll figure it out in a moment. Woodward. Martin. Don't know why it's going by Martin and not Fernandez. I won't argue, though. Um, Clark. So it's the right wing back who they've subbed off and one of their centre mids that they've switched off. Lowry was playing a Mozilla for them. They're new players playing a box to box midfield role. So that's what I'm going to keep, to keep an eye on. With the Mazzala role, what I would have done is took Lowry out wide, kind of occupying like a, a space between where you'd want the winger to sit and the wing back to sit. So that's where he'd walk by. But with the lad that's going in box to box, he'll be making late runs out of the box, joining up with attacks, as well as coming back and trying to help in the defence, like Kamara does for us when he plays. Where the fuck are we looking? Jones is having a really poor game. He's probably going to come off in a moment. What a save by Casper. Great strike from their striker, Claudio. Don't take anything away from that, but it's a fantastic save. I think I'm going to make that change just now. Just make the one change. It means we'll get two more stoppages for three more subs if needed. James Scott will come on again. 
It's a lethal eight change to an inverted wing, uh, forward for an inverted forward. I think it actually might bring off Kitching as well now I'm saying it. Just because he's on that booking. I don't want to risk going down to 10 men if I don't need to. Yes, he's got the goal and that's fantastic, but I'd rather have my defenders stay on the park than get, sub uh, get sent off. That is kind of what's more important to me just now than anything else. As we keep an eye on the fitness levels of everybody else as we're playing this midweek fixture before a game again at the weekend. Chris Day just doesn't do anything there. I guess with Chris Day, like, as much as he's not maybe scoring an assist as much as I would like, he's still scoring a pretty decent rate, like about 1 of 3 ish. Um, but what he does seem to do is just like have the team playing well. It's one of the things we spoke about before is like, as long as the players are playing well and the system is working. Like, that's fine. Obviously, you want to look for guys who's going to do better numbers in there as well as linking up play and all of that stuff. But right now, we're battling for top of the league. Fair enough, it's not a top goal scorer. Or maybe even that prolific goal scorer. But 1-3 is still decent for us. And I'm not going to knock that back. I'm going to make a change, though, in midfield. And I'm going to take off James and I'm going to bring on Nyland. So, as a playmaker for a playmaker, he'll sit just that bit deeper. And we're making that sub purely on fitness, to be perfectly honest. We're also going to bring on Truffis for Anderson, again, just on the base of fitness. Two, three, four, five. That is all our subs done now. And let's see if we can hold out for the last 15 minutes of this game. Robinson to Martum. Tries to fire a cross goal. Nobody's there. Falls to Woodward. Hits it straight to the goalkeeper. Decent enough save. Decent enough effort. Would expect the goalkeeper to save that though, to be honest. Chris Day, can he find a player in black? He does, but Negro heads it straight over the bar. Not really troubling the goalkeeper with that one. James Scott's come on, have an awful game. So their wing backs and their wide centre backs must just be nullifying our inverted forwards. <laughs> Inside forwards, even. I'm just making up words. Truffis, Woodward. He fires it at the back post. Scott's there, but he doesn't win it. Martin, first time he Scott plays it. In Nyland has a shot from distance. Over the bar. Keeper did scramble, but it was nowhere near him. Three minutes added time. It's going to go without much fanfare, I would imagine. And with that, 3 0. Three, no, we didn't win 3 0. We're winning 2 0. With that, that should have us comfortably top of the table. I'd expect Wolves will beat Rod uh, Rotherham, so we'll check that in just a little second. That was a good win for us. That's a very good win for us, actually. Two teams in playoff positions we've beat now. Let's have a quick look. Rotherham lost 1-0, as you'd expect. So we are now three points ahead, but Wolves have a game in hand. So they're looking, to be fair. Not that it's going to make much of a difference, but that is the case of that. Blackpool look like they're going to be going down where Rotherham, Sheffield and Birmingham, probably two of them will go down. I think Huddersfield and West Brom are probably safe. But, let's have a look at our schedule, see what games are coming up. We're not going to come back for Sheffield United, because they're 22nd in the league, and we should be winning that, let's be honest, pretty easily, the way kind of form's been going this season. So let's have a look at our schedule. Why don't we... Um... No, I think that's what we'll do. We're going to come back for Coventry in Birmingham tomorrow. Then we'll come back after that for Ipswich and Luton. And then we'll end the week with Huddersfield, Cardiff. And we'll see if we are promoted. League winners. And the playoffs or if we've just fallen away. So by the end of the week, we'll either be hitting the summer and relaxing. Or we'll have a playoffs to do next. Thank you for watching. If you've liked the video, please do leave a thumbs up. It really does help us out and try and get the, the videos and the channel out there. If you want to keep up to date with everything I do, including the stuff I stream, I stream like 45 times a week over on Twitch. We're currently playing through Alan Wake Control, Alan Wake 2 series. We're currently on the Control game. We're also doing the Dark Souls stuff. We're now on Dark Souls 2. So that's four of the days. And uh, we occasionally play other things like Overwatch, uh, Phasmophobia, Lethal Company, just random stuff like that. But if you want to catch up more, there is a link to my Discord board, there's a link to my Twitter, my TikTok, and my Twitch. I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye for now.